6.30 p.m., your two-year-old son, Philip, was left unattended while taking a bath. Yes, the phone rang and... And he stood up in the tub. I always told him never... He to... reached for his washcloth. I was about to reach for it myself when the phone and rang. And he slipped, falling against the side of the tub. We rushed him to the hospital. And you, Mr. James McGinnis, on June 5th at 6.15 p.m., you left your cup of hot coffee on an end table. I went to look for the evening paper. I couldn't have been gone more than a, a minute. But the baby crawled to the table and tipped the scalding coffee over. The doctor said the burns weren't too bad. She'll be fine in a couple of months. Accidents happen. You make us sound heartless. We're not. We do what we can. We're anxious for our children to grow up without injury. But sometimes it's difficult to anticipate things kids do. And we ask ourselves, how can we avoid falls? How can we prevent poisonings and burns and other accidents? How do we protect our children? Dr. J. Arena suggests ways to safeguard our children. More than one-third of all childhood deaths are due to accidents. One out of three deaths in children in the age group of 114 is from an accident. The total uh, figure is approximately 16,000 deaths a year. Uh, you might ask, do small children under a year of age, do they have accidents? Well, indeed they do. Oh, uh, there are approximately 3,600 deaths in children under a year of age, or so 300 per month. Now, why do we have this uh, problem? And what should we be doing about this problem? We have this problem mainly because children, uh, young children, are explorers. They learn by trial and error. They like to sample things. They're attracted by anything that glitters. And most parents are not in tune with the rapid growth and development of their small children. In a busy private practice of 35 years, I've had the uh, sad experience of seeing children brought in with uh, first and second degree burns of the face because the mother failed to realize that her child could reach the uh, top of the stove and, and uh, pull down the boiling water. Or that a child that is brought in with a fracture of the arm because the parents have failed to realize that the child uh, could uh, climb the steps and then roll down and break his arm. In addition, there are other factors that may cause accidents in children. Hunger or fatigue can make a child more susceptible to accidents. Illness of the parent may cause a feeling of rejection in the child. Substitution of the person caring for the child can upset his routine. Continually tense relationship between parents is reflected in a child's behavior. A sudden change of a child's environment, as in moving or at vacation time, provides new hazards. When mother is rushed or too busy, her attention may be distracted from the child. Parents' expectations of children should coincide with the child's ability to understand what is expected. Requiring a child to perform above his capacity can only lead to frustration. Teach your child obedience and discipline. By discipline, I mean setting limits, by education, by example, particularly example by the parents, by encouragement, by cooperation, by insistence, and sometimes by punishment, but not necessarily physical punishment. This can be done by curtailing some of the child's liberties, for example, his favorite TV program. Finally, let me say that parents should love, respect, and enjoy their children. Their response is most effective discipline. Mr. and Mrs. Charles Robb, daughter and son-in-law of the late President Lyndon Johnson, began teaching obedience to their Lucinda and Kathy at an early age. The American Academy of Pediatrics tells us that young children are not only safer, but happier if obedience is a childhood responsibility. Even a young child of one can learn to take simple commands. 
as parents we also try to stay alert to the typical danger zones around the home the kitchen is an obvious one with hot ranges boiling liquids and electric toaster children usually imitate both good and bad examples try to set a good example for your children by observing correct safety practices we avoid fall when stairs are free from clutter and have adequate light. In the garage, tools should be kept in their place, out of children's reach. Most parents spot check for broken glass, rusty nails, and insecticides left down after use. Don't wait to make necessary repairs around the home. A repair made in time could avoid an accident. Brightly colored decals will help alert active youngsters when sliding glass patio doors are closed. Always clean up after making repairs. Tools should be put away immediately. Children under five are in the exploring stage. An open pocketbook begs to be searched. Pills and medicine inside could prove fatal if eaten by a child. Household products such as kerosene, polishes, and other cleaning agents may look harmless, but in the wrong hands are potential poisons. Mrs. Robb explains to her children the dangers of certain situations. She uses words like hurt and cut, sick instead of poison or harmful. All aerosol products should be put away safely after use. John, I really needed you here to do this because I don't know which is yours and which is mine. It's always best to separate external and internal medications by placing them on different shelves or in different cabinets. Oh, what about this? Is this yours? Yeah, but it's old. Let's just get rid of it. Okay, well, after I'll wait. The medicine cabinet is for adults only. In it should be medicines with legible labels. All unused portions of prescriptions or unlabeled preparations are a potential danger to everyone in the home and should be destroyed. No, let's don't use that. It's a food jar. Do you have another container? Well, I have one more bottle here. That's fine. That's that? great. Never transfer substances into food or beverage containers. All medications should be kept in their original containers. If it is necessary to transfer contents from the original because of damage, the new container should be labeled, indicating the exact substance trade name, strength and special directions regarding its use. Manufacturers include information about the product and proper administration on the label, Always read labels carefully before giving medicine to children and never describe medicine as candy. Labels give information on how to use chemicals, but labels are effective only if they are read and the warnings followed. Watch for key words on labels. Danger, warning, or caution indicate extreme care should be taken in using and storing these products. Once labels are read and the medicine cabinet is arranged, there are still other precautions. Mrs. Robb doesn't just lock her medicine cabinet, she locks entire rooms when not in use. Safety closures are an added measure of protection. The first safety cap for children's aspirin was introduced in 1958. Since then, industry and the government have worked jointly to improve child safety in the field of home medicine and continue to search for the best protection for children. The manufacturer provides the important information on how to replace the safety cap properly. Proper use of safety packaging is important, but even more important is constant awareness that all medicines, including those in safety packaging, must be kept out of the reach of children. And if there is an emergency, the American Academy of Pediatrics advises one ounce of Ipecac syrup be kept in the home 
in case of poisonings. Community poison control centers are experts in the treatment of accidental poisonings. Center personnel are prepared to quickly diagnose symptoms and give valuable assistance. They're kept abreast of the newest household chemicals and what is best prescribed for children who swallow them. Find the phone number of your local poison control center and keep this number close to the phone at all times. In case of emergency, it could save your child's life. The principal type of home accident involving children comes from fires and burns. Matches should be kept out of reach and open fires should have safety screens. Electric heaters and vaporizers should be kept out of a child's reach. Electrical outlets should be covered. Handles on pots should be turned inward when resting on the range. Defective wires should be replaced immediately and cords should never dangle within a child's reach. Parents should also check infant sleepwear to be certain it is fire retardant. One of our main concerns is safe equipment for the girls. Their toys are well constructed and not easily pulled apart. I think all parents are taking an extra hard look at toys and infant furniture. When the girls were much smaller, we made certain that their cribs had 2 and 3 eighths inches maximum spacing between slats close enough together that their heads would not be caught. The National Safety Council advises that the sides of the crib be operated with a locking, hand-operated latch. They advise parents to double check that the mattress is the same size as the crib, so there are no gaps to catch arms or legs. We never left the crib rails down while the girls were in them. Large toys could be used as steps, so we left them out. The American Academy of Pediatrics and National Safety Council remind us that from the time the girls left their cribs, we parents remain their chief source of information and practical lessons. It's a responsibility that demands patience and keeping in tune with rapid growth and development. It means staying aware of their widening range of activities. It means a tough, difficult challenge, but one we welcome with open arms. Mrs. Helen Vance McGinnis, last week you were charged with doing all the following. Staying with your preschool child while he was in the bathtub. I learned my lesson. Destroying all thin plastic wrapping and flushing all dangerous substances down the drain before discarding their containers. And keeping peanuts and hard candy out of the reach of your children. Mr. McGinnis, during the same week you were charged with preparing an adequate fire escape plan for all members of your family removing the door of an unused refrigerator, unloading and locking your firearms. Would you believe I still found a bullet in the old thing? Securing your porch rails, moving the radio out of the bathroom, and removing all cleaning agents and insecticides from under the sink. All these charges, Mr. and Mrs. McGinnis, how do you plead? Guilty. Guilty.